I'm just a little bit embarrassed to tell you how soups jazzed I am to be right here right now. I've been eagerly awaiting this um, sort of breathlessly because I've been wanting to do Nutribites for a very long time. So Nutribites are nutrition tips for a hot body and a sexy mind. Um, I, my name is Rachel, for those of you who don't know me, and for 16 years, actually more than, almost 17 years, I've been a co-coach for the cross-country ski team at the University of Wyoming, but simultaneously I'm also faculty in the Department of molecular biology where I am a passionate professor of biochemistry and microbiology. Um, I get pretty jazzed about sexy minded action, um, but really one goes with the other. That is, um, what is a hot body without a sexy mind and vice versa? So for these Nutribites, I hope I can share with you a little bit of nutrition advice um, based, of course, upon my experience as both a coach and a professor, but also um, based upon the literature and hoping to bring you up to speed on some of the newest and hottest sexy-minded dialogues that are going on out there in the world of nutrition and nutrition-related science. Uh, so I'm going to do this in the form of nutrition tips, and I'm hoping to end each one of them with a little bit of a recipe um, that I find is a good one for uh, getting some of these nutritional dishes to your uh, to your ever uh, anticipating and waitful waitful for orgasmic um, uh, mouth, right? Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the first one. Go green. Green. So go green is referring to green tea, and that is more expressly the catechins, which are compounds within green tea. Um, and I brewed myself up a, a little cup before uh, starting this uh, little Nutribite. Mmm. This particular brand is a yogi brand with a little bit of pomegranate in it, and that's why it looks a little more red than green. Um, but it's a wonderful green tea. And so let me tell you a little bit about the catechins. The catechins are antioxidants. They have anti-inflammatory properties. Um, both of those are really great thing. But also uh, in discussion is the fact that catechins can lower blood pressure and cholesterol. And I want to go through some of the literature regarding that, um, with beginning with a, an incredible meta review that was done by the European Journal of Nutrition and this is very very recent and I'm actually going to bring this into our picture um, this review can be accessed um, through the library's website and it's on the European Journal of Nutrition and it's a very very comprehensive um, review of all of the publications that met their criterion um, that are recent about green tea and the particularly the blood pressure lowering impacts of green Tea, though they do go into some others as well. So I want to scan down and you're going to see just how sexy minded this publication is with all of the very rich data that they have incorporated um, into this review. But I actually want to read to you from the discussion section um, and um, take away a little bit of a take home message from uh, some of the extensive analysis that they did. So the results of this systematic review showed that consumption of green tea and its catechins can significantly reduce mean difference in systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Although the reduction in blood pressure reported in this meta-analysis is small, even a slight reduction in blood pressure at population level can have important clinical and public health related outcomes. So the results of a published um, overview showed that two millimeters of mercury reduction in diastolic blood pressure can result in a 17% lower prevalence of hypertension. So we all know hypertension is a big thing um, in our society today. Um, so the one thing that is worth drawing our attention to is that the sub subgroup analysis indicated that green tea extract may have a greater benefit um, on blood pressure than in other forms. However, this could also, they, as they note, be due to the fact that there was a very low number um, of studies that actually looked at liquid green tea. And so there's more than one confounding variable to take into account when, um, when trying to take a take-home message away from this. I want to read down also at the bottom here, this meta-analysis also found that significant improvements uh, on LDL, which remember that LDL low-density lipoprotein is the lipoprotein that we think of as being the villain, the bad guy, um, whereas HDL, it's the one that wears the super cape, it's the high-density lipoprotein. So remember that there's more than one form of cholesterol, and it seems that green tea um, potentially has a very uh, helpful impact on levels of the villain, the bad guy, the low density lipoprotein. Um, so something else to keep in mind. So um, not only that, um, but we can talk a little bit more about some other impacts of green tea. 
So um, this is one that gets me soups jazz. Um, the modulation of gut microbiota in mice and rats. And this is a very recent study as well. So let's take a moment to talk about the microbiome. The microbiome is the population of microorganisms that um, are important not only on our skin surfaces, but throughout our entire gastrointestinal tract. So we have a, a very um, important population of microorganisms. In fact, um, they outnumber the number of cells in our body um, by probably more than 10 to 1. So they are very, very uh, essential in our health. In fact, we might even uh, conclude that the microbiome microbiome is the, could be considered the least studied organ in our body. We are only just now beginning to understand all of the impacts that the microbiome has on our health, ranging all the way from our ability to tolerate lactose um, to our mental health, such as anxiety and depression. Um, more on that, I promise to come in future Nutrivites. But what this study, this recent study in the Journal of Nutritional Science and Vitaminology actually looked at the impacts of the primary catechin in green tea on the gut microbial populations. So looking at alterations in the microbiota um, based upon consumption of the most common uh, catechin in green tea. Um, so that, uh, that catechin here is abbreviated EGCG. So this is uh, more than half of the catechins in green tea are this type of catechin. And so what they looked at with regards to the impacts on the microbiota, the, the bacteria in the gut, is that they were able to see a couple of interesting things. That is that it changed the um, overall distribution of the, the types of bacteria within the gut. But one of the interesting notations that they make, um, and this study wasn't even available in full text at the library, I'm hoping to order it, um, but they actually are able to show a significant response in the reduced occupation of Clostridium species um, and an increased trend of bacteroides. This is a really great thing because remember Clostridium difficile is the most common cause of antibiotic associated diarrhea in patients in hospital environments and in healthcare environments. And bacteroides, these are the good guys in the microbiome. So we can see that this already has very promising trends for how this might impact the overall distribution of the microbiota in our gut. So uh, in fact, they go so far at the end of this as to say that these catechins um, will affect gut microbiota in rats associated with sequel patterns of short chain fatty acids, which could be responsible for regulating energy metabolism in the body. So the impact of green tea is not just an impact on us and our body, but also upon our least studied organ, quote unquote, our microbiome, and the impacts that the green tea can have upon that microbiome. Um, even as simple as what we do in our microbiology class, we spot concentrated green tea extract onto a plate of bacteria, and we see, you know, zones of inhibition in, for example, Staphylococcus aureus. So we know that green tea can impact in a, an antimicrobial or microbial distributory way the, um, the concentrations of bacteria that we would see growing in our gut. So this get jazzed, right, because this is all of the impacts today that we're going to talk about, about green tea, um, and maybe you're already starting to think about, how am I going to add green tea into my diet, you know, How, am I just going to brew it up and eat it or drink it straight as it comes or, or am I going to uh, try to come up with good recipes to take in uh, green tea? And so I wanted to share with you a recipe that I use for honey tea. I call it honey tea, um, and what I do is, is um, at night I throw in three bags of green tea into a liter of water in the morning, I flip on the heat, um, and then I can bring it to a boil and put in about a tablespoon of local honey, which more on that to come, I hope, in Nutribites, why we might want to make it local honey can help alleviate um, allergies, potentially. Um, then squeeze in the juice of half of a lemon, um, let that um, steep for a little while, and then strain it and serve it either hot or cold. Today, it's about minus 19 degrees outside, so I'm going to be drinking it hot.